What you just witnessed happening here in real time was the key breaking off in the ignition. It's been rusted in for years, but now it officially is stuck and broken in the ignition. So very ironic, new engine, just got it going, ready to leave can't turn it on. Uh, so what I did was I took a pair of little needle noses, grabbed onto the stubby just stump of the key and managed to get the engine started. Well, I guess I don't have a key anymore, but I do have these and about half a millimeter of metal sticking out. Oh man, so first impressions of this engine. Oh, my credit card is in my pocket. I should not lose that overboard. Um, I am motoring at three and a half knots right now and it is so quiet. This engine at three and a half knots is quieter than mine was in idle. It's, <laughs> it's insane. Mine, as you guys know, I had to wear earplugs when I used it and this one, I don't even have to raise my voice, so that's really crazy. I'm just sort of getting it up to temperature and then slowly adding revs on to see where uh, it wants to sit and to just test out. But the throttle is barely forward and I'm already going pretty fast, so I think because I tuned the engine yesterday, I think it's gonna be a little bit different, the throttle, than mine was. Because mine, I could put the throttle all the way down to the ground and I still, probably could have gone further uh, the old one so maybe that one wasn't tuned properly um, but this one is so quiet also new engine mounts definitely helps getting it properly aligned helps I don't think the old one was aligned very well and um, it runs so smoothly I'm just first of all three weeks on the dock super expensive super shitty hate docks it's a nice marina though. Very nice marina, really nice facilities, really nice people. I'm not saying anything bad about the marina, just me personally, I'm not a marina person. Um, so one, happy to be out of the marina. Two, insanely pleased with this motor. Really, really, truly, it's amazing. I'm so happy right now. I just put up my sail. Um, the repairs look good. <laughs> I'm going very, very close hauled, so I'm testing out this new system that I made while I was in the marina board. Um, my main is sheeted in the center because of the way everything is set up, and I hate it for so many reasons, but I can't ever get the end of the boom far enough over when I'm close hauled to actually give me the angle that my boat can get. So, I have made this contraption that attaches onto the boom and then clips into either side of these triangle things, probably have a te technical name, uh, and that allows me to actually cinch in the end of the boom. I can switch it over really quickly with this quick release shackle. And also I have this thought that when I'm underway sailing dead downwind, I can ri rig preventers on either side of the boat and lead them back to the cockpit so that I can just clip into either preventer on either side and I don't have to run forward every time to relead it. So this is gonna be revolutionary. Check it out. This looks beautiful and it works so well. This is so easy to pull the boom over with um, and it is giving me an amazing angle. So very, very pleased. Um, updates on the engine. Everything is still running really well, sounding really good. I'm still going an awesome speed. Uh, no funny water in the bilge, no funny smells down. There is a kind of funny smell down below, but I feel like there's a lot of gunk that needs to be burned off this engine. Um, so I think that's what it is. If it doesn't go away by the end of this motor, then I'll consider more considerations, but it's not really that bad. It's just a, yeah, I think it's like cruddy old stuff that's getting snarfed off by the motor. So anyway, yes, feelings are running high in a very happy direction. <laughs> So I got into the Anchorage a couple hours ago and I'm just so incredibly tired. I think the past week or two of working on my engine and trying to finesse everything has finally hit me. So I've kind of collapsed, um, but it's so pretty here. I'm the only boat in the whole Anchorage. Check it out. They're wild sheep. If I was staying here another day, I would definitely go ashore. Looks like there's a ton of tents, so I'm guessing there's a bunch of backpackers, probably a lot of really cool people to meet. Um, but I'm on a mission, Ooh, it's cold. <laughs> I do wanna tell you though about a saga that I've had uh, that I didn't film because I just didn't think about doing it. So uh, 
My new engine came with a new ignition switch and everyone told me to set it up, but I didn't. <laughs> I decided to keep my old one because it was already wired in and when I took my old engine out, I labeled everything. I labeled all the wires, I diagrammed it all, and I knew that it would be really easy to just rewire everything the way it already was because it was very plug and play. And I was worried that with the new engine and the new wiring, the new ignition switch, um, it would just become more complicated if I was trying to set that up. So for those reasons, I kept my original ignition switch. Now, the key in this has been rusted in place for the past year, at least. I haven't been able to get it out, and it's sort of bent at a funny angle, which is scary, but I've always been careful. Yesterday, when I was putting the Jerry's back in the Laz, one of them bumped the key, and it turned, it bent really far in a scary way. And then this morning, as you saw, when I went to go start it, the key snapped off. Now I did last night try to put this metal glue on the connection of the correct key, but it just didn't work. Um, so I was able to use a pair of little Leatherman thingies to get it going for the first time, but it was holding on to a piece of key that was really soft and crumbly, and I knew it was not a long-term solution, because that, eventually, that key would just completely disintegrate. And it was true, because when I went to go turn it off, I could barely get a grip on the key. It was just all crumbling out. So then I had two options. Option one, um, hot wire the engine to start it and then block off the air supply every time I wanted to stop it to kind of choke it out. Uh, option two, which is what I went for, the brawn over brains option um, <clears throat> is what I'm gonna show you now. So uh, the key, since it's stuck in the ignition, it means that the ignition will turn. However, you need to be able to get something on that ignition vice grips to get purchase on it which you couldn't do which i couldn't do before because it had a metal housing so what did i do i took the whole ignition out of its little holder here i took a hacksaw i sawed all around and i cut off a piece of the metal housing long enough so that i could get vice grips on this area around the key and now I use the vice grips to turn the ignition. I also just made little marks so that I know where neutral is and where run and where off are just um, because it's not obvious now there's no longer a key and it works. When I actually, this is the sort of leaving the vice grips in place position, but to turn this bad boy <clears throat> you actually need to be able to push this button in so I have the vice grips like this and then I push it in. Um, and I can turn it. I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't want to um, But then when I'm done with it because if the I left the vice grips like this They'd probably get hit and fall so then when I'm done I just put them in the holding in place position. This is a little anchor That means that when it's up like this you're on anchor <laughs> uh -huh, Just in case I forget how to read but yeah, um, so there was metal housing that was threaded for this thing that came all the way up to the edge of here. You can see I actually scored this a little bit when I was cutting it off. Um, so, and then I had to take some pieces away so that I could thread. I took this whole thing off uh, and out. But to get this guy, I didn't want to leave it hanging from the wires because that's dangerous. I wanted to have it back on this little metal tab, so to get this screwed back on, um, cause I knew I would mess up the threads when I was cutting it, I had this little bolt that I left on the back side so that when I cut it I could unthread that and then I put this back on. Um, so now I have a new ignition to go with my new engine. And to everyone who's gonna say I told you so, I know, I know, <laughs> but. <laughs> I'm still gonna have my party switch. That's all that really matters, right? Um, no, I kid. I'm not kidding. <laughs> but I, I know ultimately I should replace the ignition, but really there is nothing wrong with starting the engine like this. Not that anyone would ever want to steal this boat, but if they did, they wouldn't be able to get the engine started because they probably wouldn't know how if I took away the vice grips. So, who's laughing now? <laughs> I 
just turned off the engine and I'm sailing not very fast and I'm not quite making the tack angle to get around the headland, but I was tired of motor sailing. Um, even though I have a new engine and I can use it, <laughs> I still always prefer to sail. Um, it's really beautiful. I have all day to get in. Um, tomorrow is a work day. I need to edit another video for you guys. Um, so I'm probably just gonna sit on my boat all day and do that, which means that I'm quite happy to spend the rest of today sailing. My heart drops to the floor They said it would get easier But I don't know who for Days move faster now I swear I can feel them slip away But some things last forever But love it never fades Okay, I'm close to getting in and the sun came out for about two hours. I put my solar shower out to warm. It is warm, it feels like human skin temperature, which is creepy. Uh, and now the clouds are out and it's cold again, but I still have about an hour until I get in and wanna take the shower. So I'm thinking, what if I put my down jacket over the solar shower to make it stay warm? It works to keep me warm. And even though I'm endothermic, I feel like perhaps it will help the solar shower from getting too cold. Here you go, buddy. There. <laughs> Snuggle up. That's right. Stay warm. <laughs> Well, I'm almost in for the night. The wind's definitely picked up a bit, so it's going to be a great sail in, and I am very excited to drop the hook, take this hot shower, and have some dinner. I slowly worked my way south towards Fongere, where Tiga hopped on board and cruised with me for a week or two before taking off again. In Fongre, I did a little bit of a crew change and took on Dan, who you guys may remember from some previous videos, which I'm going to show you in a second here. From there, the two of us sailed to Great Barrier Island, where we met up with a good crew of people and hung out for a couple days. And then Dan and I took off and sailed to Fitianga, where I was eventually going to leave my boat on a mooring for two months and hop in a van toward the South Island of New Zealand and learn how to mountain bike. Where is all this footage, you ask? Well, unfortunately, I don't have any of all of these sailing adventures besides this one of me climbing a tree. But don't worry, <laughs> it picks right back up during the first of many storms that Gecko was to survive in New Zealand. This one was a pretty windy one. Um, Dan and I were anchored up in Fitianga, just dealing with it while I sorted out the mooring situation to leave Gecko. Who is Dan, you guys may ask? Well, let's take a look back at some old episodes where you guys will actually find out that him and I have known each other for well over a year. A year and a half ago, Tiga flew to Polynesia to visit me, where she joined Gecko and the two Amodus, and her and I met Dan and the crew of Uhuru. We were walking down the beach and happened to come across Dan, who was fixing his surfboard. 
Later that day, he came over in the Uhuru dinghy, which at the time had a very faulty engine, and the three of us went spearfishing where I caught a lovely unicorn, cooked it up into a pasta, and brought it over to their boat for dinner, and thus began a beautiful friendship between Gecko and Uhuru that was to last through Polynesia, Fiji, and eventually New Zealand. <laughs> oh, and she did it. <laughs> <laughs> Beating all of us <laughs> by one. <laughs> a small problem that we encountered was that the engine wasn't starting. We were downwind of a rapidly approaching thunderstorm, and we were all starting to get pretty cold. Dan got the engine started once, but it promptly died again, so we were sitting there watching this lightning and hearing the thunder coming closer and closer, and just hoping that we could actually get back to the anchorage. Eventually, Dan did get the engine started, and we made it back to our boat safe and sound, so this story has a happy ending. <laughs> the next time we find Dan on my channel is eight months later in Fiji, which actually coincides with the next time Tiga came to visit me. We met up with Uhuru in the Asawas and had an awesome beach fire that night. Dan is the chef on Uhuru, which is a 62-foot oyster, and he brought most of the food, although Tiga and I did make some nice tasty contributions, and we had an amazingly magical night of bonfire and swimming in the bio room. Mm -hmm. And our last Dan appearance is when he was one of the two guys who gave my boat a tow out of Fiji when I left without an engine. <laughs> Two inches of fuel. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to put Gecko somewhere that I can leave her for a month or two so that I can go travel around. Uh, I was trying to get down to Tauranga, but unfortunately this storm hit before I could make it down there. So I'm kind of stuck in uh, this place called Fitianga, um, up a river, which is really protected. A lot of current, but um, no fetch. And it's a great place to be for this. It's uh, for the next two days, 30s, gusting 40. Um, but here it's pretty flat, just some tide rip from the current and a lot of wind. But uh, Gek is holding, I'm in about <laughs> 11 feet of water and all the boats around me are moored. So I'm the only one who's swinging a ton. Um, but with the current, it's kind of crazy because the boat will actually ride up so far on the chain. The wind pushes it from the back forward, but the current holds it um, so that the bow is to the current. And so the chain is actually stretched under my boat and it grates underneath the bow, which is a horrible sound. Um, so it's kind of a, yeah, it's funny. The wind is starting to be strong enough to actually push the boat against the current. But then if the wind drops, the current swings it around. So sometimes I get wind just from the side. Um, so I've had to flip down my solar panels because yesterday the wind was actually blowing them up <laughs> too far. So it's a little bit of a, probably not leaving the boat day today, but, um, I might just try to leave, find a mooring to leave my boat here um, because it seems like this weather's not going to let up anytime soon. <laughs> The storm is finally over and Dan and I have moved my boat onto a mooring, which is the spot where I'm going to leave Gecko for two months while we tour in the van around New Zealand. Um, I found this mooring through Instagram. So first there's a captain here in Fitianga named Jean who super hooked me up um, with a friend of his, Rob, who's letting me stay on this mooring for free. I tried to give him money and he refused. Uh, so it's really awesome. I've uh, it's a really awesome spot. The people here are so nice and I feel really confident about leaving my boat. Um, it's in a river, it's protected. I've already sat in this river through a 
pretty big storm and seen that there's no fetch, no waves, no swell, very protected, so it makes me feel even better. I wish I could have sat on this mooring through that storm uh, just to get confidence in the mooring itself, but I did get a lot of confidence in my anchor, so that's also good. Um, Dan is getting the van ready and I'm just sort of getting my boat ready to be gone, <laughs> to be gone from it, my little baby, so I've uh, packed and now I'm just running through the list of things um, to do for my boat. So this is kind of the pile of stuff that I'm, my kite gear's already in the van, uh, and this is the rest of the stuff. I have wetsuit, so this is my wetsuit, this is my drone, and then this is clothes here, and my jacket, and then this is just miscellaneous uh, electronics, all my equipment for editing so I can keep making videos for you guys, uh, and then shoes and hats and other gear, and this is basically all I'm gonna have <laughs> for the next few months, which I'm very excited about. Thanks for watching this week's video. Ooh, coffee's ready. <laughs> I just woke up. Um, <laughs> I just finished editing this last night, and so I'm getting ready to sail back up to the Pacific Islands. I'm gonna leave for Vanuatu either in a couple days or the next weather window. I haven't really decided yet. Uh, so what I'm doing before I leave, one of the projects, tasks that I have to do is that I'm pre-editing about four videos because one, on passage, I can't upload, and two, I'm not sure how good the Wi-Fi is in Vanuatu. I'm guessing not great. So I want to have uh, at least four of these guys uh, scheduled and uploaded and ready to go so that I don't miss out, uh, so you don't miss out <laughs> on any of the YouTube things uh, that I'm doing. So... These are all sort of coming out all in a line, and if you pay a lot of attention, you will notice that the outro of this one and the next one, I'm wearing the same outfit because they are within the same five minute period of time. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what am I saying? The usual things. Ah, thanks for watching this week's video. I put out new videos every two weeks on Mondays, and for my patrons, you guys get a snack on the weeks that I don't put out a full-length YouTube video. Um, these snacks are custom. Whatever patrons want me to make a video about, I do that, and if there's no requests, then I just do something that I think is relevant or fun or silly or beautiful, whatever. You never know what you're going to get. It's always exciting. So if you'd like to become a patron, my Patreon is patreon.com slash windhippie. And for one-time donations, I have a PayPal. That's paypal.me slash windhippy. Also, merchandise uh, description in the link below if you want to buy some of that stuff. And thank you, Tish, for helping me get these videos scheduled, reminding me when I need to do another edit, and just generally being amazing. And thank you guys for all of your comments. Uh, I probably won't be great at responding to them uh, coming up because I don't know what my internet situation is going to be, but as soon as I do get it, I will respond to them, I promise, because I love reading them. It gives me this little eep every time a new video goes up. So, uh, I hope you guys have a good day, and I will see you next week for those of you who are my patrons, and in two weeks uh, for those of you who are on YouTube.